Welcome YouTube fans. This is my uh, Hermes Rex C100 FK02 uh, pit controller. As you can see on the back of it. These are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then 9 and 10 I believe. Yeah, 9 is this one and 10. 10 is the positive. Make note of that. That's what the front of the unit looks like. It comes with uh, instructions that are written in Chinese out of total loss and as I can see on YouTube a lot of people are looking for information on this thing. Well I've been doing a little homework for the last year there are two types of thermal couplers. This one which is a good one if you're going to be using it for liquids. This particular one and they're both K-type thermocouplers that the C100 can read. This one I'm going to be using, as you can see, it's got ceramic tubes on it. This one is going to be used in a blast furnace, which will be re reaching temperatures up to 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Just so you understand, though, the C100 unit reads everything in Celsius. So you're going to have to figure out how to convert it yourself. Uh, Google Celsius to Fahrenheit. Back to the controller now. Again, it's a Burmy C-Rex 100. I've got mine wired up. This yellow part is goes to the thermocoupler, which senses the temperature of the room or the liquid or whatever it is you're going to put it in. The two red wires, and be, make note too, there's a negative and positive, they go to the SSR relay, which is a solid state relay. This particular one is rated at 40 amps. I've got it hooked up to a 12 volt battery to run a light. The black and white wire is the power input for the unit for 120 volts. When I plug it in, it's going to cycle. This is an old Duncan ceramic kiln that I picked up. And what I'm doing is converting it from the old system where they used to use cones to, these, to the newer system where I'll be using a PID controller. This is one of the SSR relays. Um, the actual wiring, you can't see it, but there's like three sections to this. This being one section, which is disconnected and not in use, but each section is about 15 amps at 220 volts. If you don't understand that, stop where you're at, don't go any further. As you look inside, you can see the heating elements. There's four heating elements to each section which takes the 15 amps. These first four that I'm showing you are not hooked up. I haven't fired this thing up yet but I have rewired it. I'm doing experimenting with the PID controllers right now. That's the main thing with this video is to help other people out there who I see on YouTube are having a difficult time. What I'm building here is a refractory or a blast furnace or what I'm going to be using it for is for melting glass. This thing will exceed temperatures of 2300 degrees. Um, commonly called in the industry with the hobbyists that are into glass blowing a glory hole. This is just the first starts of it. Um, it's got a lot more to go. But that's where that ceramic thermal coupler that I showed earlier in the video is going to be measuring the inside temperature of this glory hole. Alright, 
right, this is the pit controller. I'm about to plug it in. As you can see, it is starting to cycle. It's just giving you codes. Mine is reading at about 19 centigrade, which is around 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it went up to 20 centigrade. It's probably closer to 70. Now the lower number, and that's the 20 in red. That's the thermocoupler. This part here that's measuring the room temperature. I'll hold it. As you can see from my body heat, it's starting to raise the temperature. The bottom number, and if you notice, there's a light flashing. I have the unit wired to the SSR relay. Because it's below 150 centigrade, that's what the bottom is set at, it turns on the relay which allows electricity to flow through it, which it will be doing when I hook it to the kiln for the heating elements, but at 220 volts versus 12 volts. Hope you understand that. That's the 12 volt battery which is running that flashing light. Wish I had a different kind of light to use. And as you can see the PID controller to the left, the little blue box with the red wires running to it, you can see a little red light there. That's telling you the electricity is flowing to the SSR, the solid state relay, which is allowing the electricity from the 12 volt battery to run through it and to turn the flashing light on. Now I'm going to go to the thermocoupler and heat it up. You'll notice that the temperature is going to rise. Again, this thermocoupler is set up for high heat. And a broken quartz is pretty hot. As you can see, the temperature is jumping. Okay, it's going over the 150 mark on the bottom level. Temperature starting to drop. Blow on it to cool it a little faster. Now remember, these readings are in centigrade. When it starts, it's getting closer. And you can see over here that the red light is not on. The temperature is dropping slowly. When it gets closer to 150, it'll start cycling. I wish I could maintain the temperature a little bit more accurate than with a blowtorch, but you'll get the general idea of what's going to happen here. In other words, right now the electricity will be flowing to the kiln to heat it up any higher because it's plenty hot for what this is set at. Hello? There we go. Now it's sensing it, it's running power back to it. Okay, now to make adjustments to this. Just hit this button right here. If you notice the 1.5, the 0 is flashing. This will raise or lower the temperature that you want to, to reach or can, to be the maximum temperature. Okay, if you hit it again, or hit this button, it'll go to the middle number where the 5 is now flashing. Go to the two arrows to the uh, far right. The down arrow will lower it. That will raise it. If you click it one more time, it'll go to the 100 mark. We're going to change that to a 0. And let's see here. Let's go back to the very first digit. The second digit, it said it's 70. Let's bring it to 50. And now we'll go to here. And now it's set. Where the thermocoupler is reading the temperature right now because it's still hot from the earlier test at 50 or at uh, 85. When it reaches 50, the power should turn back on. 
Okay, you can see it's dropped to 52. When it reaches 50, it should uh, start, or drops below 50, it should turn the heat back on. Or the electricity back to the light so it flashes. Wow, that was a big temperature difference before it kicked in. Don't fully know why. Well, Happy New Year. January 1st, 2017. I'm going to uh, test fire this thing today. I'm going to put it outside, though. I need 120 volts to run, run the, uh, the uh, PID controller. And then 220 volt, 30 amp. To run the heating elements which the PID controller will turn on and off. Just give you a few ideas on this kiln. That's the temperature probe or the thermal coupler that's connected to the PID controller. That's the temperature sensor that's connected to the PID controller that senses the temperature of the inside chamber of this kiln which I'll be using to anneal the glass for the glass blowing when I get to that. You can see the heating elements in that. Some of them are exposed. This uh, kiln's a little used and abused but... Okay, I'm getting ready to fire this up. I've got the PID controller plugged in. It's set to reach a ma maximum temperature of 100 centigrade. Current temperature is 10 centigrade. We're outside. As you can see where I'm at. I'm going to leave it open so I can see the heating elements heat up. I'm going to unplug the PID controller first. Okay, I've got the unit plugged in to the 220 volt. I've already turned the circuit breaker on. As soon as I plug in the PID controller, PID controller, it should turn on the solid state relay switches which will start to heat up the elements and you'll see the PID controller lights turn on. Okay, I can see the lights on the SSR are operating. I think I see a little smoke coming out of the, uh, you can see the red light on the SSR there operating and then the PID controller right there. I hear it humming. So it's using some juice. I can feel a little warmth coming out of it. I'm going to close the door on it now. Okay, you can see the temperature's rising. Every now and then I see a little smoke coming out of the uh, kiln itself. Both PID controllers are operating. We're already up to 13. Wish I would have had a clock to time this. The current time is 2.20 p.m. We're at 24 Celsius. 25. We're now at 57 degrees Celsius. And it is 2.23. 2. 23 p.m. Still 223 and we're hitting 60 degrees Celsius. It just turned to 224. It's 69 degrees Celsius. 78. 225. It's 79 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's at 227 at 97 degrees Celsius, 98. The PID controller is turning the heating elements on and off. Currently you can see they're off. And it's at 99 and it just kicked in. That's the red light you see there. I'll just keep cycling to keep it right around these temperatures of 100. 228 and it just turned back on. It's 100 degrees Celsius inside there now. Two hundred and twenty volt 
approximately 30 amps. PID controller is operating both units. That's where the thermal coupler is or the temperature probe, whatever you want to call it. It's still 228 and it's cycling. It's trying to maintain the temperature at approximately 100 degrees centigrade. When I get this officially going, it'll be more like 500 degrees centigrade, which is closer to a thousand degrees is what I need to keep it in there when I go to anneal the glass after blowing it, or shaping it, molding it, forming it. If the glass cools down too quickly, it will shatter. That's why you need to do an annealing and slowly bring the temperature down. With this setup, I'll have to do it manually. This does not have ramp capabilities that I am aware of. If anyone knows how to ramp this PID controller, please send me a text or email or contact me through YouTube. I'm also on Facebook. Kevin Cronin EP, standing for Elmwood Park. That's where I'm from. Everything appears to be working properly for this low temperature test. Um, obviously uh, when I have it set up to go to 500 plus Celsius it's going to take longer. But all systems are go. I'm going to shut down now. And I got to get back to working on the forge furnace for actually melting and blowing the glass.